Hello everyone, I am Ankit and you are watching Study IQIS English channel. In today's video, we are going to cover an important organization known as India's Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO. And this organization has played a key role in Operation Sindur and its conflict that resulted between India and Pakistan. So let us understand the context of our today's discussion. Now you, we all know about Operation Sindur where Indian government and its armed forces targeted as many as nine terror camps and their infrastructure located in different parts of Pakistan, be it POK and be it Pakistan's Punjab province. Similarly, after this Indian attack on terrorist organizations, Pakistan the army retaliated by attacking our civilian and military infrastructure. Now to counter these attacks made by Pakistani army, Indian government employed what is known as anti-drone systems which were developed by DRDO. And one of the more important components of India's anti-drone systems are Akash missile. Similarly, to respond to these kind of attacks, Indian armed forces extensively used BrahMos missile to target as many as 11 different Pakistani air force air bases. Now, these supersonic cruise missiles enabled Indian government to destroy important runways and hangars of Indian armed forces. So, this video, we are going to discuss the role of DRDO in strengthening India's indigenous capabilities and also we'll try to understand important platforms and weapon systems that have been developed by DRDO like Akash missile system, like BrahMos, like Tejas and like the Astra Mark III or Gandhi missile. Understood? So let us start our today's discussion quickly by understanding the role of DRDO. Now DRDO, it functions as a R&D wing of Ministry of Defense of Government of India. And the aim and intention of DRDO is first of all to empower India with self-reliance in critical defense technologies and systems. And this is a more important objective of DRDO because Indian government wants to make India Atmanirbhar Bharat and it also includes making our defense forces Atmanirbhar. Now historically Indian armed forces they have dependent on imports for important missiles and arm developments, right? But now Indian government is looking to procure these weapon systems, these aircraft, these helicopters from Indian organizations and therefore DRDO's role as an R&D wing becomes very important. Also, equipping our armed forces with state-of-art weapon systems which will fulfill the objectives and needs of the various three services of Indian Air Force or Indian Armed Forces, that is Indian Navy, Indian Army and Indian Air Force. So what these organizations do that they highlight their requirement to DRDO and accordingly DRDO develops and researches a weapon system sufficient for them. Understood? So this is basically the role of DRDO. Now the history of DRDO is that it was formed in 1958 by merging two different existing departments that were responsible for R&D activities in India. That was Technical Development Establishment of Indian Army and the Directorate of Technical Development Production of Defense Science Organization. So these two organizations, they were merged into forming of DRDO and this was back in 1958. Now currently DRDO is headed by an official who is designated as the Secretary of Department of Defense of R&D and also is simultaneously designated as the Chairman of DRDO. And this Chairman of DRDO is assisted by scientists who are designated as Chief Controllers of the Technology Domains. Now what are these Technology Domains of DRDO? Let me tell you. Now DRDO as an organization functions having seven different technology clusters or domains. Now these individual clusters and domains are responsible for individual fields like there is an aeronautics clusters which uh, develops aircrafts and drone systems. Similarly, there's an armament cluster that develops explosives and missiles. Also to deal with electronics, there's an electronics and communication system that majorly develops radar systems, right? So similarly, there are seven technology clusters which also include naval systems, aeronautics and different technological domains that is there in DRDO. And to assess these clusters, there are various laboratories as many as 53 of them. And these are specialized laboratories that closely collaborate with Indian Armed Forces Indian Armed Forces, they highlight the needs and accordingly these laboratories develop the weapon systems. Now these 53 specialized laboratories, they ultimately function under the seven technology clusters that I've already highlighted to you. So this was the organization structure of how DRDO responds to the needs of Indian Armed Forces. Now let us understand quickly the important weapon systems that have been developed by DRDO and these weapon systems have helped India to achieve its objective of destroying any threats that might emerge to Indian interests. First in this regard is the Akash Missile System. Now Akash Missile System is a missile system 
categorized under a medium range missile system which means the range of these missile systems are less than 100 kilometers okay so these can target up till 100 kilometers therefore these are categorized as medium range missile system now these have the ability to be determined or deployed mobilically that means you can deploy them on trucks and other platforms that can be located as per the needs of armed forces and these were developed none other than by drdo now it was designed and developed to defend against various aerial threats that emerge to india and these might emerge from flying aircrafts helicopters ballistic missiles or in these drains even the drones okay so to counter these kind of aerial threats we use extensively and we depend extensively on the akash missile system now the most important highlighted features of akash system that it has high mobility which means you can uh, deploy it anywhere as per the needs it can engage multiple targets simultaneously like other important missile systems like s400 similarly it uses indigenously developed technology which means you're not dependent on other countries to supply its raw materials therefore it is an example of atman nirbhar bharat now let us quickly understand its important features the range of akash missile system the originally developed akash missile system was up till 25 kilometers but with newer iterations we have seen the capabilities of akash missile systems have enhanced for example there is this new generation akash missile system called as akash ng missile system and you know the ranges of these new developed akash systems are almost 70 to 80 kilometers of range so you understand India has improved its Akash missile system extensively with subsequent research and development and its development iterations. Also, the newer generation aircraft systems or Akash systems, they're having uh, important and better seekers and radar systems, which helps it to target the aerial threats effectively. And also, they can travel much farther, which means the capabilities of these systems have improved. Similarly, it can be deployed anywhere, which means it can be developed more mobilely, right? So it can be configured on mobile platforms, be it trucks, be it railways, be it ships, right? So you can technically deploy them anywhere and therefore you can relocate them also in case of the needs during the war period, right? And the most important part that it can engage multiple targets simultaneously up to four targets, which can be done in autonomous or even in group modes, right? So it can effectively target more than one aircraft system or it can even target swarms of drones. Understood? So these are the important features of Akash missile. Now let us quickly move to the another important missile in the India's armory known as Brahmos missile. Now this is a supersonic cruise missile. Supersonic means it travels with the speed of higher than the speed of sound, right? So therefore it is called as a supersonic missile and all three defense services of India, that is Air Force, Navy as well as the Indian Army have these kind of missiles. Now these were developed by Brahmos Aerospace, which is a joint venture between India's DRDO and Russia's Matrasonia. Okay, so it is a joint venture company. One of the companies in the joint venture is DRDO. Now the Brahmos missile, it operates very close to the speed of Mark 3. Mark 1 is the speed of sound. So essentially Mark 3 means it travels three times of the speed of sound. And when it travels at such a high speed, you understand it has a reduced flight time and having a reduced flight time gives you certain advantage. First of all, that the ability of enemies to track your missile reduces and even if they are able to track it somehow, they won't be able to destroy it because it travels at such a high speed. Similarly, it does not provide them with any chances of interception. Therefore, giving such a high speed to a missile is very beneficial, especially for India. Also, what you need to understand, these missiles operate at a principle of what is known as fire and forget principle, which means these uh, missiles needs to be fired only by GPS, adding GPS coordinates to them and automatically these missiles will hit their target with ultimate precision. Now, these missiles can cruise at an altitude of as high as 15 kilometers in their cruising altitude and at their terminal stage which is the stage very close to hitting the target it can travel as low as 10 meters to avoid the radars similarly it can carry conventional warhead or conventional payloads of up to 200 to 300 kilogram so such a high load payload capacity enables it to destroy much more strengthen and reinforce targets also now as earlier india was not a part of missile technology control regime so as india was not a part of missile technology control regime therefore any aerial vehicles or missile systems india developed before signing mtr it was 
एबल टू ओनली डेवलप मिसाइल्स विथ लेस दैन थ्री हंड्रेड किलोमीटर्स रेंज बट नाउ एज इंडिया इज अ पार्ट ऑफ एम टी सी आर सो द न्यूअर वर्जन ऑफ ब्रह्मोज मिसाइल डेवलप आफ्टर इंडिया बिकेम दी मेंबर ऑफ एम टी सी आर दीज हैव मच हायर रेंजेस ऑलमोस्ट सिक्स हंड्रेड किलोमीटर्स रेंज राइट नाउ द बेस्ट पार्ट ऑफ ब्रह्मोज मिसाइल दैट इट हैज बीन इंटीग्रेटेड विथ इंडिया सुखोई थर्टी एम के आई fighter jets right so these fighter jets when they carry brahmos missile automatically our ability to strike any target becomes quite improved and also these can be deployed in a fighter aircraft so automatically the ranges of these missile adds further by adding the range of fighter aircrafts also and these missiles that is brahmos over the sukhoi m30 aircrafts these were used extensively by india to target the military as well as terrorist infrastructure in pakistan therefore this is the ability of brahmos missile which makes it quite important right now let us move to another weapon system that is the lca tejas aircraft now lca tejas aircraft was primarily developed to replace mig 21 fighter aircrafts of indian armed forces because you understand going forward india needs to have a large number of a uh, aircraft which is capable to defend india's interest and automatically india can't go in and procure hundreds and hundreds of sukhoi and 30is or the rafale aircraft because first of all these are expensive and second of all even if you can afford these aircrafts you by buying those aircrafts you automatically become dependent on other countries that is france and russia so ultimately to reduce the cost and to reduce our dependence on other countries india wanted to develop a fighter jet of its own and therefore drdo pitched in with development of lca tejas and this lca tejas is a fourth generation aircraft which going forward will be the mainstay of indian armed forces now this is an aircraft having a single engine and with a delta wing configuration designed to have a multi role capability which means it can intercept other aircrafts it can bomb the targets and it can also undertake different kinds of mission as planned by the indian armed forces now it was originally designed by aeronautical development agency which is one of the laboratories of drdo and it is manufactured by hindustan aeronautics limited and it has been designed and developed to cater to needs of indian air forces and now it is also been envisaged to be deployed in indian navy now the uh, drdo ad has taken multiple iterations to develop these uh, aircrafts further by making them into tejas mark 2 aircrafts now these tejas mark 2 aircrafts have increased payload capacity which means it can carry large number of payloads more missiles and more armaments it will have more hard points which means more missiles can be embedded on these aircraft similarly it will have higher ranges which means it can travel and destroy targets located much further and also it will have redesigned cockpit and a better aesa radar system so ultimately the government and the defense services they are trying to improve the capabilities of tejas by bringing the subsequent iterations of tejas aircrafts understood now let us on the last discussion let us have discussed these important missile systems known as astra mark 3 missile systems popularly known as gandiv missile systems now this gandiv missile system is a beyond visual range missile system that is an air to air missile system now during the balakot air strikes one of the lacunas that indian air force experienced that it did not have indigenously designed and developed missile systems that can destroy enemy aircrafts with a much higher ranges so indian armed forces and drdo developed astra missiles so these astra missiles are missiles which enables indian air force aircrafts to target enemy aircrafts at a much further distance even beyond the capacity of pilots to see their targets so therefore these are called as bvr uh, missiles or beyond visual range missiles now these are developed by drdo and this will be deployed on sukhoi 30 mki jets of indian armed forces and indian air force and also on lca tejas aircraft right now the features of these astra mark 3 is that it can strike targets up to a distance of 340 kilometers at an altitude of 20 kilometers in height and similarly if it can hit targets at 190 kilometer range with an altitude of 8 kilometers above sea level so therefore you can understand it can hit targets so further away therefore it is an important missile and you know what makes these missiles to hit targets such a further away it is the new engine known as dual pulse solid fueled ducted ramjet engine right so this engine provides this uh, missile with extended range and high speed which is enough for it to 
अचीव एंड डिस्ट्रॉय एनिमी एयरक्राफ्ट नाउ नॉट जस्ट हैव इट हैज हाई स्पीड बट इट ऑल्सो हैज हाई मनोवरेबिलिटी बिकॉज वेन यू टारगेट एन एनिमी एयरक्राफ्ट दैट एनिमी एयरक्राफ्ट डज एवरी थिंग दैट इज इट चेंज डायरेक्शन रैपिडली सो दैट द मिसाइल्स डू नॉट हिट दम सो एनी मिसाइल्स ऑटोमेटिकली वेन इट इज ट्राइंग टू डिस्ट्रॉय अदर एयरक्राफ्ट नीड्स टू हैव हाई मनोवरेबिलिटी और हाई कैपेसिटी टू चेंज डायरेक्शन इमीडिएटली देयर फोर इट कैन हैव अ हाई मनोवरेबिलिटी दैट इट हैज अ हाई एंगल ऑफ अटैक सिमिलरली any missiles should also have the ability to counter any attempts to destroy it electronically and therefore it has radar countermeasures also which makes it immune to conduct any jamming by the enemy aircrafts so therefore these capabilities are what makes astra mark 3 so desirable and therefore it can be so effective when it comes to destruction of enemy aircrafts so therefore these are the platforms that we discussed today these are just limited amount of platforms that give indian armed forces an edge and we have seen that these platforms were used extensively by indian armed forces in its combat against terrorists and against pakistani armed forces so this brings the end to our today's discussion if you want to download the notes these will be available on my telegram channel so you can search ats live on the top right hand corner of your app and you can also have an option to scan this qr code it will take you directly to the channel subscribe to it and you can download the notes but before going please try to solve this particular question this is the question that i have curated exactly on the upsc pattern and we have seen that going forward upsc always have a tendency to ask important military platforms that are in use so please try to solve this question let me know the correct answer in the comment section and with this we conclude our today's session the notes will be available here so with this please have a very good night